When I have fears that I may cease to be. It's a poem written a few years before Keats' death. Keats' worry is to die before writing the best poetry that will bring out his artistic creativity. Such a death will be simply considered ordinary. When Keats views his imagination as a child of green, wherein, wherein he is both the harvester and the harvested product, the second quatrain of the poem brings out his views that the beauty of the natural world is full of miracles, and that is what he wants to transform into his poetry. These are the material that Keats wants to use to bring out poetry, beauty in poetry, to limelight, thus contrasting immortality of nature with the transience of Keats' verses. In the last six lines, he turns to the idea of love by using fair creature to signify that even his love is not immortal. The main preoccupation of this poem is the brevity of nature of love, creativity and everything that had given Keats a glimmering view of life. The final two lines express the feeling of misery and despair. As Keats finds himself standing alone and trying to understand the fears in his heart, of the wide world I stand alone and think, till love and fame to nothingness do sing. He is also afraid on how to manage his fears. Whether Keats attains to these fears or not, he will still be anxious and worried and life will be scary. Kiss was obsessed with death in an understanding way. The understand the obsession can be justified because of the fact that he knew that he was ill and he knew that he would die. Tom had been frequently sick and kids had to nurse him during his serious bouts of illness. Sick with the same disease, Kids' suppositions are not at all incorrect because he had stopped writing poetry due to ill health. It will be prudent to remember that Kids' poems have all in one way or the other featured death, death of nature, death of love, death of memory, something concerning death. There are only a few poems of his that do not reference the end of something. The poem is pregnant with images sensual in description of the fear that Keats possesses. He is very worried of dying without becoming famous in writing poetry, worrying about his, the death of his beloved ones and the acceptance that death itself is not as bad as it seems. Keats is so worried that he may die without creating an indelible impact without creating an indelible impact in English poetry. He also feared that he would not be able to achieve his full capacity in terms of writing. He was totally afraid about the limitations in his life. Therefore, the use of words relating to fertility, such as gleaned, garners, full ripened grain, denote the idea that the artistic creation and his mind represent a fertile landscape. Keats believes that he can transform into poetry the material that he works with and as an artist he fears the lack of it. He's afraid that he might die without doing justice to the beauty of nature. He's also terrified that he might not achieve the artistry that he had dreamt of. The reference to high romance could also suggest Keats' fear for not finding the right person to fall in love with. He was afraid of being lonely. Above all, the woman whom he had met and fallen in love with, Fanny Brown, the relationship was not consummated in a formal marriage, as her mother would not consent to their union. In the ending lines, the use of aunt shows that there is an additional fear of Keats not to see his lover again. So we get into the terrors that haunted Keats, the opportunities provided by life and his inability to live up to them. Keats is more terrified of failures than death. Lastly, his greatest terror is to have found and achieved love, yet lost it. 
true to life, Keats never sees Fanny again after his departure to Italy, where he takes his last breath.